Okay, this was another really tense and suspenseful episode. So, uh, yeah, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. I really loved how, you know, ultimately it doesn't take, a, take up a huge amount of the episode itself. But gradually we see how Cassian does get Circus to agree you know, and basically, like, it has to be Circus because he's the one they listen to, you know. If they're not sure that Circus is in on it, they're going to be like, I don't know, I mean, Circus, you know, he does try to make things work as well as possible. You know, he's not he's not as cruel as the guards themselves, so he really has to be, the, you know, and there's even the line, although that's not exactly about that, but Cassian tells the the... Oh, hold on. No, right, right. At first, yeah, Cassian, when they're in the control room, Cassian tells, first he tells Sarkis, you know, tell them what to do, the the Imperial people. And I think he then says it about, you know, right before he goes on the mic. And yeah, you know, because that is, they listen to him, even the ones that, yeah, he's only for the one level, but the other ones, you know, the the just the... Yeah, the, the confidence and, and the, the kind of just, yeah, because he's been there longer, so when he talks about this stuff, he knows this stuff. Cassian hasn't been, you know, what, I guess a little over a month by now, maybe five weeks or something. I, I forget if they said exactly, but Circus has been there for a while, you know. And, let's see, the... I, I really love how only, uh, how one way out becomes their rallying cry, and let's see the yeah. And before they start the the you know the the escape, the the voice on the microphone, which I also appreciate, it's only in this episode that we find out that is a person. You know, I honestly thought it was a robot or a droid since we're in Star Wars. I, I thought, oh, it's like autom <clears throat> it's like an automatic uh, recording kind of thing, you know. But no, it's a person, but there's a voice, uh, what's the word? Like a voice changer over. And we've heard that voice so many times now. We've heard it, you know, there's been at least one, uh, there's been a, at least one line for that voice every single episode since Can it's, uh, Cassian. Cassian Andor became Candor since he went to prison. And now it's telling them, you know, how to escape. And and that this is when they just yeah, absolutely love that. And yeah, and, and in this one the, the voice says, you know, before we see that it's a person, the voice says I forget I, I didn't write down the entire line, but something about will be punished collectively to really ram it home you know i believe this is the first time it's been said in a live action star wars thing but yeah that is what the empire does they punish collectively to to scare people into submission when a fair system should own should the the, the punishment should always be proportional to the crime and it should only hit the guilty person you know so yeah, when when you punish collectively, you basically you're you're trying to scare people. And yeah, and we see Davos, yeah, really really creepy, telling you know telling my Mothma, I have a fourteen year old son, you have a thirteen year old daughter, and just yeah, really really creepy. And and it's such a great because that is what happens in dictatorships you know I, I we don't know exactly what he's done but i mean he kind of has the vibe of like a mob boss or something like he doesn't talk like someone who's just stolen some things no he talks like someone with power but without legitimacy and when he says you know yeah we both want something here you want the the access to the money which in dictatorships, like the organized criminals, they, not always, but a number of them manage to get away, uh, manage to avoid scrutiny from the, the large government, partly because the, the dictatorship, they're just like, well, I mean, as long as it's not a bunch of individuals going, getting together and, and 
wielding their power against us. And the, the like a lot of organized crime in dictatorships, they're like, I mean, whatever, like we're going to get treated like criminals, whether it's a dictatorship or a democracy, because we are criminals. But the dictatorship doesn't really care that much because they don't care about their people, you know. So just, yeah, and, and um, I, d I don't remember all the details, but something that my father has pointed out on multiple occasions is during the Soviet Union, yeah, a bunch of, you know, organized criminals went to, to the, the gulags and they took over because they're like, they're used to pushing people around and wielding their power. And yeah, you know, the, they... The, they ran a bunch of the, you know, not, not officially, obviously, but yeah, they had a lot of power in there, and it didn't matter that much that they were in prison, because what they really want is the power. You know, they, they want to they wanna have a higher status without having to, like, you know, be good people. You know, that's one way to get status, in, at least in a democracy, ideally. But yeah, the, the let's see. Um, yeah, so that was the, the, yeah, absolutely love the, the Mon Mothma thing, and, and, you know, that thing of he, he points out, you know, it, like, he says, I don't believe you, I don't believe you that you're not thinking about this, this is not something that you can just throw away, you know, and the, uh, let's see, was there anything else about the money and the mafia? I think I did say everything I had there but but yeah you know the dictatorship doesn't want the money to to be an in every you know money means purchasing power power is power if if a lot of regular people have power then the dictatorship is under threat and again in a democracy ideally at least in a real democracy that isn't the case you know they're not threatened by regular people with power, because essentially the idea is everyone can get power, you know, so what does it matter that some, you know, and don't get me wrong, obviously, there should not be a huge amount of money in any one person or any one family's hands, but nevertheless, you know, so, so yeah, the, the, they don't want, and, and she, yeah, like, she took a vow, as has been pointed out, the, I th uh, did both Luthen and Vel, I forget, at least one of them said to her, you took a vow. And, yeah, if if she doesn't agree to his terms, you know, what did Tay say? It's a short list. You know, there's not a lot of people who can offer this. And the first person that he introduces Mon Mothma to is someone Mon Mothma hates and thinks is despicable. And, yeah, it is this thing of, of just... That was probably the best one, you know. Tay isn't stupid. He's not gonna parade a bunch of, you know, complete, um, you know. Yeah, he's not. He's not gonna parade around a bunch of people that she's just gonna say no to. He's going to go to the most likely, even if that is the one that she really, you know. And yeah, I mean, there might be other mobsters, but some of them don't just want. You know, he wants legitimacy. Some of the others might want something considerably worse, you know. I mean, yeah, and and it it is that thing of just yeah. Back when the, you know, we know that it used to be that you know the the Senate used to be. I forget. Is it? Do we know that it was a democracy during the prequels? I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure, but it definitely it wasn't a dictatorship. There were senators. You yeah, there were representatives and. It appears that there was some, like the people had some choice of of who, but I forget if it said that you vote for senators in Star Wars. Any anyway, yeah, during the prequel. Anyway, you know the the yeah he he was a criminal before he's a criminal now, but if he has some some power and you know. I mean, dude's probably been waiting for this. He's, you know, you know, he saw fascism rising to thunderous applause, and he was like, I think this might be my lucky day, because they're not going to touch me, and now I have something over... It's just a matter of time before the rebels, you know, start doing things that lead to, you know, Star Wars Galaxy equivalent of the Patriot Act. 
Now, I I thought it was incredibly tense. Kaz cutting slowly with the, the, you know, and thankfully he got that other tool. And wasn't it even, was it Circus who gave it to it's Something like that, you know. And it is just, you know, in, in you know, before when he did it, he did it without Circus knowing. And he just said, well, I'm going to take my break, you know. 12 hours, obviously, bathroom breaks. It, you know, it would be absurd for them to, to completely reject the idea of bathroom breaks because if someone, you know, goes on the floor, that's going to slow down this work. So, yeah, you know, they get, and, you know, not only, I mean, we, we see it's going to take, like, by the time that he has cut through that thing with the tiny little tool, they they will have built two Death Stars. You know, this is not... So so he gets the tool, he wedges it in, and just, you know... Yeah, f forces the, the tube open, and yeah, you know, apparently this whole place runs on water, so obviously there are gonna be a bunch of pipes of water. That's, you know, they're, they're like blood veins, basically, in, in a, you know, human body or animal body. And... Yeah, water and electricity, not the best of friends. Now, let's see, the, the, um, yeah, I, I, it's a small thing, but I really appreciate the new guy is clearly panicked, like, he's, he's incredibly scared, you know, when, when the guy's like, if I have to zap you with this, you will remember, you know, and he's standing, he's, like, he's shaking, he's, he's just absolutely terrified, and, uh, you know, I mean, when Cassian went in, we, we already know that it's not his first time in a prison. When the, the, you know, but this other guy, yeah, he might, this might be his first time in prison, and he's absolutely terrified. And I really loved the, the turn of, you know, he gets to zap the guard. That, uh, yeah, so I quite like the, the fake fight to, to distract, uh, you know, so, so the, um, it's the, I think it's the redhead who's, who's like, what did you say to me? You know, the other, I didn't say anything. Well, if you said it, just say it to me straight, you know, just, and, and it's like, I mean, the guards can't even hear them. They might as well, you know, they could be reciting Wookiee poetry for all the guards can hear, but there's gotta be Wookiee poetry. Let's be honest. The, the, you know, we, we all know Chewbacca, when he wooed Oh wait, no, we don't see he doesn't have a wife, but he has a mother. When Chewbacca's mother was wooed by Chewbacca's father, 100 percent Wookiee poetry. Anyway, yeah, you know, they they the guards can't actually hear, so I appreciate that they're putting in the effort to come up with this, you know, and yeah, once they see this fight, they have their guns, the, the or the guards have their guns trained on the guys fighting because they think they still have control. You know, they're like this again. We're going to train our guns on them. They're going to be like, oh, right, uh, guards. I don't know how I forgot that. Okay, um, hands behind hands in this whole... And I also really love, you know, some of them, we see them, you know, program, you know, assume program, I think it's called. On, on program, that's it. And, you know, they, they put their hands behind their heads, and a couple of them have, like, these big metal tools, you know, which is, again... Yeah, the Empire really doesn't think that they have any threat from these guys. You know, one one of the like I'm not I have I have exceedingly little expertise when it comes to the area of keeping people from revolting. You know, I've not not that I haven't tried, but they always seem to revolt. Anyway. One of the first things, do not put heavy objects in their hands. Especially if they outnumber you, you know. So, yeah, that was a, a great, you know, just get this, I think, like a panning shot across. And, the you know, hands behind heads, but also tools in, in several hands. And the, let's see, yeah, so, so the, yeah, the new guy electrocutes the guard. And several, you know, a bunch of the, the guys on the floor toss these heavy steel things. Of course, not everybody hits. But it is this thing of, you know, they realize, I mean, what, it, I, I, I keep getting it wrong. Is it 50? I, I could buy, it might be 50 down there on the floor, you know. You know, maybe not all of them are uh, quite capable, you know, it's one thing to lift the thing and to throw it that, you know, that far and that hard. 
you know, but maybe around 40 of them are throwing things. There's only two guards there. That's not going to, or was there, yeah, only a few guards there. So it's really not, and, and the, yeah, it 100% it worked. And, you know, they, they uh, decide to electrify the floor, which, you know, thankfully, they did, you know, yeah, they weren't going to do that over two people fighting. You know, that's like, okay, if we electrify every single time there's a fight between two people, they're going to, they're not going to do what we tell them to. They're eventually going to be completely numb to this, you know. So, no, two people fighting... Train our guns on them, you know. If it's if necessary, shoot, you know. But we're not going to electrify the entire floor just for you know. That's that happens when they start throwing stuff, and yeah, the water fries the the mechanism, which you know we found out that is possible when they fried a hundred people. So yeah, and you know all of them get guns and run down the you know, and I love the part where it's just a couple of drops of water from from the ceiling for for one of the for one of the rooms and they look up and they just know this is a good thing you know this means that the people who have power over us are losing that power you know and let's see. yeah and and they get to the control room and turn off the the hydro power and you know Cass tells them on program and they have to you know put their hands behind their heads which you know it just is inherently like it's not how you deal with people that you th think you can trust you know I've literally I've in all my you know many dealings with friends and, and acquaintances and such I have never once asked them Put your hands behind your head. You know, that's the kind of thing the cops or the guards or, the, you know, such and such do. It means that they don't trust you. It means that they're considering you potentially dangerous and certainly beneath them. So I love Cassian doing it to them. And they they have no choice but to do it, you know. There's, what, what are they going to do? Take a uh, blast... Fa laser blast? Phaser blast? Well, I forget. You know, take a shot to the, to the torso just to not put your hands behind your heads they're not going to do that of course and the the yeah i i i really love hearing cassian say tell me what to do tell them what to do that that i will never tire of that maybe maybe i'll only get my ringtone or something just absolutely love hearing him say that and that gives right yeah and i really love there's this very brief like maybe 10 seconds of just officers hiding, afraid, in a room behind a door. Suddenly, they're the ones in the, that position, not only their targets. You know, just, it's a it's a small thing, but just, yeah, really love that. And and it is this thing of, you know, the 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 prisoners don't have to take out every single person, as long as there's no one in their way, still. And... Yeah, I, I really like the, the scene with the elevator where Luthen and I think his name is Lonnie, you know, talk and yeah, they have a man inside the ISB. That is wild and, and really, I mean, Dedra does not suspect that at all. Like, she was unhappy with what Lonnie said they should do, but she wasn't like, he's a spy. She was, she was just like, oh, you know, he's right. Obviously, if we do this, then yeah. And just yeah, the the you know the the moment that we find out oh they have a man inside the ISB you know that kind of that you kind of have to explain how that even happened, and Luthen says you know your career has has you know you you yeah. I don't have the exact line. Your career has done well because of information we've provided, information that cost me dearly. More moral gray, eh? And just, yeah, you know, the, the you know, Luthen again claims Aldani isn't him. And, yeah, you know, 50 rebel men, he considers that a small price to play, to, to pay, to make sure that Lonnie can stay undercover. And it, I mean, that's the horrifying thing about these things from a from a purely factual standpoint you know it's it's horrifying 
killing 50 men for, for the but factually yeah if you know obviously if these 50 men escape to safety it's gonna be completely clear like okay there's someone in the ISB like we do not broadcast this information nobody knows but us it has to be one of us you know and and Lonnie basically he's eyeing retirement he's like look I'm gonna give you this final information you're gonna use that and obviously they're gonna know someone's in there so I'm not gonna return to them I'm gonna go be a father but he took a vow, you know, he, he thinks that he has lived up to it, and Luthen says it's impossible. And his, you know, the entire speech where he says he sacrificed everything is just fantastic. You know, this is, this is why you get Stellan Skarsgård. This is why you get, you know, someone of immense talent. Because he can deliver this and be completely, you know, again, like, at the end of the day, He's an actor. He's never sacrificed, I hope, a single person in his life. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't in real life live with this kind of, you know, he doesn't live in a dictatorship. You know, Sweden sucks, I have to say that, because I'm Danish, but it's not a dictatorship. But the, yeah, it, it's the, the, or wait, is he Norwegian? Honestly, both of them suck. The, the, the it's, I'm joking. I'm not... If I were a soccer fan, I'd probably be serious about them them sucking, but they they are perfectly adequate neighbors. The the yeah, you know, he in real life, Stellan Skarsgård is not dealing with all this you know, spy stuff. But he makes you believe it. He makes you believe he's been doing this for years. He makes you believe that he's given up you know, good men, and it's, yeah, the, the dictatorship, yeah, they're not necessarily going to question, you know, how did Lonnie find this? They're going to be, wow, Lonnie made it, that was amazing. We got so many of the people that were going to fight us. Lonnie, you're up for a promotion. You know, what was it? He's been working there for six years, and in that time, he has risen through you know he skyrocketed through the ranks because he's been giving these you know and yeah dictatorship they they they're so certain that they're all powerful they're so certain that they can't lose that they they accept you know to, to be fair some of them do think they they can lose but they they very frequently blame the wrong people you know that was you know among the many, among the countless things horrible about Stalin and Hitler, they kept blaming the wrong people, kept having tortured and executed people who were not at all to blame for the, the problems that... The, but yeah. I think that is absolutely everything I had written down, so... Let's see... But, but yeah, I, I really appreciate this detail that Luthen, he has now told two different he I think he tried with Mon Mothma but she knew it had to be him he's spoken to three allies and each time claimed that it wasn't him and the two of them who seemed to believe it he let them believe it because at the end of the day like if no one knows because yeah maybe someday he'll be caught and then, if they think they can link him to Aldani, you know, yeah, that's that's why you know he's not. You know, he he points out in this in in the big speech here, he doesn't see the light of gratitude. He can't go around bragging to his allies, to people he know for a fact are on his side. Like nobody thinks that Saul Guerrera is not a rebel not a single person in the galaxy like you could ask an infant who doesn't even recognize the name and they'd still be like no he's definitely a rebel he is not on the empire side you know he's a he's he's a zealot he's you could never get you know in a million years he would never work for the empire but he still has to say nah that wasn't me i was thinking it was you you're sure it's not you ah, it's so good though it must be you and just, yeah, um, you know, he is legitimately 
alone, as he says, you know, and yeah, all this, you know, the, the talk of how he is, he's, he is using the methods of his enemies, and he just, yeah, absolutely love it. So, so yeah, as usual, make sure you watch Jesse Gender's video on the episode, and yeah, I, I, based on the episode of last week, I wasn't surprised that this was the big jailbreak, but it is, you know, they have now, you know, at first it seemed like, oh, you know, every third episode is going to be the, the big one, but then episode nine wasn't, instead it was episode ten that was, the, so, yeah, I, I don't know what they're gonna do with the last two episodes, but I could imagine there's gonna be some kind of closure, I, I mean, I figure probably by the end of episode 12 and or will be in a place where he can at the very least lie low. I, I don't think they're gonna have a huge ridiculous um, cliffhanger at the end of episode 12 since you know we know there will be a season 2 but it will be like I forget how long we have to wait for it so yeah I don't know it's possible they'll do a cliffhanger but either way it is extremely difficult to wait an entire week. It's going to be nigh impossible to wait for, you know, between the season finale and the the, the season opener of season two, but somehow we'll get through it. There, you know, there's a lot of great Marvel content in the meanwhile, so that's... and, and will there be more Star Wars? There will probably be some other Star Wars. Yeah. I I forget. I don't have a I don't have it memorized. Anyway, yeah. Um this was amazing. Really looking forward to next episode. I will be recording I intend to record two more videos this week, so stay tuned. Catch you next time.